talk about their operating and capital, correct? Okay. Good evening. How are you? Hi. Uh, with us tonight, we have Mary Lee Barker. She's our chairperson of our commission. We also have several other commission members and staff members. We have Mary Lee Saption, Susan Davidson, commission members. Uh, Nancy Fonda, your services director. Ellie Sheehy, commission member. And Jeanette Lixman, Services. First, I thought I'd explain our capital budget. Sure. Uh, we have two items in the budget, which are two uh, replacement buses. Um, right now, as you're aware, we have two buses. It's called a lease through Greater New Haven Transit. They actually own the vehicles. And uh, we had one of the vehicles placed in the budget for fiscal year 14. But after assessing the mileage, the condition, the maintenance um, with Joe, Ed, Lizzie, and Craig in the garage, we felt that we could bump it up one year to fiscal year 15 for a replacement vehicle. Um, I do want to mention, too, that several years ago, at least going back prior to 2007, there was grant money through Greater New Haven Transit District. That's no longer. If we ever want to purchase a bus, when they put their orders in, um, we probably could get a good deal to place an order with them, but we'd have to pay the full amount. And the only reason why we could get a good deal is because they order so many in their fleet. Um, and then for the second vehicle, right now it's in fiscal year 16 to replace the second vehicle. But again, what we do each year is we you know, evaluate the, the maintenance, the condition, the mileage, and so forth to determine what year is the appropriate year to replace the vehicle. And again, these are handicap accessible vehicles, and that's why we do need those, those buses. I don't know if anyone has any question on the capital. We have two buses, and then we also have um, one of the former police cars. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we have a police car is to do mm -hmm. transits <coughs> into the hands in area because we can no longer go on the mirror mm -hmm. And it works out great too that we have that vehicle. Sure. So you'll Even be replacing that. both of the vehicles that Yes. You know. Okay. Now with the operating budget, what I would like to do is highlight, unless you have any other questions, where we're asking for increases. And I did put in a memo um, regarding the increases. I do want to make mention, too, that we also forwarded a memo to the Board of Selectmen and Finance outlining $43,973 in grants and fundraising efforts. Um, and I do want to commend the commission members and the staff this year for trying to raise money. Um, it is a little bit time consuming and with the economy the way it is, it, we're seeing harder times, but we feel that we did a great job um, in raising funds needed uh, to keep the budget down. Um, I'm going to go line item by line item according to the increases. One of the increases uh, we're recommending is a $500 increase for regional services, and that's for the agency for Team Incorporated. We have eight agencies um, that are overseen by human services. Um, we look at their services, we look at their budgets to see whether um, an increase is warranted or not. Team Incorporated has asked for an increase for many, many years, and we've leveled, funded, funded them. Uh, Karen passed out a letter that we have from Team outlining that last year alone they provided $25,026 uh, worth of service um, to 51 residents, and that was through energy assistance, their elder care program, which is um, uh, like a home care program and toys for kids program and the energy assistance program. Um, also, we've asked for an increase um, for equipment rental, and that's for the copiers um, in the uh, human services department. 
and that's based on usage um, in the contract. Telephone, we asked for an increase of $100. And when we started the budget in the end of November, already we had expended 62.7%. So that's why we are asking for a slight increase there. Communication security, a few years back, uh, the security system went up $90, and that's why we're asking for a small increase. And then lastly, um, furniture and fixtures. We are requesting a steam table um, for the senior center kitchen, and that's estimated at about 4,500. And that includes to a refrigerator for beverages. The steamer and accessories actually come to around 3,056 plus um, freight. That's the estimate we received in the refrigerator, is a refrigerator for beverages, which would be in the lower kitchen. Um, the kitchen has actually three different rooms, two different levels, but it would be in the lower level, and that would be utilized for beverages. And again, that comes to about $804 plus uh, 189 freight. And in the sound system, which is really needed for the seniors. I would tell you, we have speakers come in, we have entertainers come in. The people in the back, they really cannot hear. Um, our system is an old system um, that we had received donated money years and years ago. The microphone is going, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes they miss out on some very pertinent information. Um, when we have good, pro good educational programs and good speakers. So that really is needed down in the uh, senior center. And those are the areas. I mean, we really tried to level fund any line item that we could. I don't know if you have any questions. Good job. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
We have slightly increased the um, professional development. Conferences are, are going up a little, and um, we feel it's more important than ever to attend the conferences with changes in election law and new equipment becoming available. Um, Same-day registration and electronic check-in are um, approved and ready to go in the next uh, year or so. So, any questions? Nothing? Just one correction, there is a <coughs> typo on there. Um, next year is a canvas year. It says non-canvas year, it is a canvas year. And we might have to slightly adjust that line item, but not by much. Stephanie has the rest of the election budget in her um, budget, so she can address the paper, that. Papers, I mean, the ballot, we have the paper ballots, okay. the card programming, the contract services. Um, okay, so let's do, let's tab 1125. Let's uh, move to that. Okay. Um, we spent quite a bit this year. Next year will be a smaller year. It lowers um, our proposed, proposed budget to 7300 for next year. And then the following year, it'll have to go back up again uh, because we'll have a, a state election and we'll have you know, primaries. There's all kinds of other things mm -hmm. that are going on the following year. So this year should be. Um, we should be able to do this with 7,300. But the, the absentee ballots, the card programming, uh, those are, what, $750 each. We have three new machines, so we have six machines now uh, because we have two districts. So that's um, a more of an expense for us. Oh, I should point out that all the elections that are uh, town elections and referenda are one district elections. We do not need to provide the, the two districts for those. So it's at a cost savings in this coming year. That's that. We'll stay with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. You want me up? Am I up? <laughs> okay. Um, the uh, general professional services, I know you're going to ask me about that, Matt, because <laughs> you're looking for money, but we started a scanning project uh, for our board and commission minutes. Um, they have to be scanned. They still have to be microfilmed. They haven't changed the laws yet. Um, we're in the process of working with another company now that will do that on a monthly basis. So we'll uh, be up to date with that. But um, we're going to be scanning those and some of um, our other records. And um, the legals. We went way over our budget this year because New Haven Register raised their rates from $300 to $955 for one ad. So I went to local newspapers where I could, you know, their time frame matched. Um, otherwise, I went to the Connecticut Post, and they're $199 for the same ad. So um, that should be okay this year. And uh, we're scanning the minutes. And yeah, that's about it, I think. Any questions that you have? Yeah. Any questions for Stephanie? Yeah. Good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, next is the fire department. Um, that's tab 1230. Hi, Ilya Alexiadis, 14 Seymour Road. I am the chairman of the fire commission and with me is the chief of the fire department, Sean Rowland. I'm very happy to report that our fire department is in excellent shape and is the best it's ever been. Our operations are, are top notch. Our, uh, our firefighters uh, receive excellent training. Morale is as high as I've ever seen it in my years on, on the commission. And our uh, equipment is in good shape and, uh, and subject to uh, regular repairs and, and replacement as we've addressed in our uh, previous uh, uh, capital uh, budget presentations. Uh, fire service is provided uh, under agreement with the, uh, with the Woodbridge Volunteer um, Fire Association. Uh, we also have an active junior corps that, um, that really leads into, you know, provides us with 
with the new firefighters. Um, our, our, a number of our newest members started, started as, uh, as juniors, as teenagers. Uh, and as they uh, graduate from high school and turn 18, they get more training and, and move, move, move right up the line. Uh, and it helps us uh, maintain the, uh, the strength of force that we need to serve the town, um, not just <coughs> adequately, but in, 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 in an excellent manner. I really can't say enough about, about the department. Um, in the last two years, we've had a record number of calls, um, thanks to, uh, to our, uh, our <laughs> Superstorm Sandy uh, and Tropical S Storm or Hurricane Irene, and then the, uh, the Nor'easters that, 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 followed, that followed those. Those are, uh, you know, really two weeks where the, uh, the firefighters were at the, at the firehouse and on calls, you know, pretty much 24-7 for, uh, you know, 24 hours a day. Um, for a week and, and provided uh, tremendous service to the uh, to the town residents. After this past storm, I, I, I said it then and I'll, I'll repeat it now. If you had electricity, it was thanks to the firefighters who were, who were cutting trees and clearing and clearing roads and allowing the UI to, to stay on the job uh, here in town and, and, and do their work and get power restored um, at, as soon as possible. Now, uh, and 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 one sort of uh, side effect of, of all this hurricane work um, is that uh, we, uh, our, uh, our staff and our officers and, and the chief prepare these FEMA applications um, which generate uh, substantial revenue. You know, for the, really, for the first time we can say that the fire department is, has generated substantial revenue for the town, um, both in terms of reimbursement for volunteer hours and also reimbursement for uh, use of equipment. Now, when we go on a record number of calls, we spend more money on um, on, on on equipment, on supplies, on, on, on fuel, on, and on repairs to the equipment. Because if you use if you use the equipment, then more uh, more more uh, uh, repairs are needed. Um, so the reimbursement, uh, the FEMA reimbursement, um, uh, is appropriate, and you'll see that our our, our our budget also reflects some of those uh, additional um, expenditures. Um, but what this has done also is increase the administrative burden um, for uh, the officers, and in particular for the chief um, and, and our staff. Um, you know, it's not the old days of the bucket brigade. Um, and we are blessed with excellent leadership, both in terms of the officer corps and the, and the chief, who has done um, um, an outstanding job uh, since his election. Um, and I really can't say enough about him. But at this point, I'll turn it over to the chief for the, uh, the, the details of the, of the budget presentation. <laughs> okay, we'll, tr we'll try to start off with that. Um, this is my second year uh, presenting an operating budget. In the last two years, we've kind of gotten slammed with the storms that we talked about, so to get an actual feeling of where we stand, it's a little tough because we've had two <coughs> abnormal years. So did as we sat down with through line by line figured out roughly where we think there's going to be cost increases come July. Our vendors are usually pretty good, along with other municipalities that their budget years start uh, July 1. So usually our vendors wait until July 1 to have cost increases. So we roughly figured what the cost increase would be for items going down. So um, if we want to start at the top, um, if you want to take that one? Um. Yeah, I have to say it again, but that's fine. Um, what you see in terms of the, um, in terms of our budget request uh, for our, uh, for our salaries, uh, we're requesting a substantial increase in the uh, in the stipend uh, for the chief. Um, when the stipend was was initiated uh, years ago, before my time, it was in recognition of the increased uh, administrative burden uh, that that. That came with being the, the chief and and, and and also the the assistant chief in terms of coming to meetings like this and reporting. But what we've seen in recent years, and even in my how long have I been on the fire commission? Six years. Even in, in, in my relatively short time on the fire commission, I've seen this administrative burden just explode. Um, where it's it's um, you know it's it, it's really a full time job except on. Um, Done by uh, by a chief who also has other employment. Because of it. But the stipend is, you know, we are uh, proposing a, a substantial increase in 
in the stipend in recognition of the uh, huge amount of hours required administratively. Um, it's not, it, you know, it's, it's not just operations. It's all the state, it's, it's all the state reporting. It's on this disaster relief. It's meetings with, with, with other, other town officials and coordinating um, with, the, with the power company and, uh, and, 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 and other agencies. I mean, the chief can sit here and tell you what he does better, you know, even better than I can. But I know that I've, I've seen it in, in action that he's, um, <coughs> that the stipend does not begin, even at the amount we're seeking, doesn't be, begin to cover the time involved. Um, the, uh, the fire marshal, um, <coughs> the, the fire marshal uh, <coughs> salary at part time, um, we are proposing um, essentially the same as it's been uh, with a 2% uh, increase, but it, it will be under that this year um, because we've been uh, have, have, uh, have interim fire marshals um, for the past few months that have been working um, less time. Um, but uh, once we appoint a, uh, a full-time fire marshal, we expect to get that back up to the, um, to, to the full rate. So by the next fiscal year, um, you know, we, even though there may be, we may be saving some money this year, uh, to pro uh, that amount will go back up um, in, the, in, the, in the current year to the, to the regular rate. Are you waving your hand at me? Yeah. So for the fire chief, could he, how many hours does this represent on a weekly basis or monthly basis currently, and what is the increase number? It's not an hourly rate. Oh, I know it's and not it an hourly it, rate, it, it, but I'd like to know what the, t what the time commitment right. is associated with it. That's what I'm looking for. I know it's not, it's not, I know it's not an hourly rate. We think that it's easily in excess of 40 hours a week. Right. The problem is you can't translate a stipend to an hourly to an, to an hourly rate because because it, it is a it is an inadequate hourly rate. Um, is a, it, it, it is, he is a volunteer and is we're not proposing to comp we don't compensate the chief for for firefighting duties. This is really for it's a, it's a stipend um, for ad for administrative administrative tasks, um, but it's uh, it's many daytime hours and most nights of the week, besides getting up in the middle of the night for a fire call. You know, just in terms of, um, of running, running the department. So the 40 hours is the non-firefighting hours, or that's the total? It's our, it, it is our estimate of the, of his, of his total hours. <coughs> then the other, um, I have, another, I have another question yes. about that. Do you have information on what um, <coughs> stipends are in similar towns that have these arrangements, or are there no comparable towns? Well, we think we're pretty unique. But um, no, I didn't come. I did not come with you with, with information on, on comparable towns. But I think you can look at the police chief salary and, uh, and, and compensation uh, package, um, and 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 recognize that. That a a paid fire a, 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 a paid position a, a salary fire chief um, that you know you would you, you know you, you would be talking about a a, a much greater budgetary impact that. and this doesn't need and, and so right. Um, right. you know even if we doubled yeah. the, the current stipend right. they would not come right. close I to uh, uh, to to uh, Fairly compensating right, for his right. time, I, I so it, it, it's a, a it, it, it's not a, um, a, it's not really subject to that kind of analysis. Is, is, is what I'm saying. That's a fair question, but it, it, it's. Um, can, I, can I ask then, a question? Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if it's all right to ask about the, the uh, uh, fire marshal position, have there been discussions at the board of fire commissioners? to revise the budgeted hours for that position given the turnover in that position. I guess it was 28. Have there been any any discussions at, at your commission about scaling that back to uh, 20, perhaps, where, where it had been? Um, <coughs> fire marshal. No, I said the fire, did I say fire? I meant fire marshal. I said, did I say fire marshal? That's what I meant. That's what I meant. We do not intend at 
this time to reduce the number of hours that that's that that's what you okay that's yeah that's what I said. no I think I think what's just going on we um, we're redoing some things and gathering information and this and that what I see with that is it's going to be it's at least 28 hours a week if not more so um, but the commission is going to look at it they have a report they're going to look and then every um, everything will be basically broken out how many hours for each thing and then that's how they can base the number on to get the inspections done the early inspections done every year i mean i think what what, what, what sean's alluding to is that in the last um i think it's months or so we've, we've upgraded the the technology in the with regard to the uh the fire marshal's office um even though we don't have, even though we, we only had um, interim fire marshal an interim fire marshal at, at this point um, we've upgraded the technology, which will provide us um, a better reporting and, and, and controls. But when we look at the work that needs to be done, um, uh, we, we, we think it's a 28 hour, we think a 20 hour -a -week job. We do not, um, we don't recommend uh, reducing that, re reducing, reducing that time. Um, we, think there's, we think that, that that's what the, that's what we need to, uh, to to serve to provide uh, appropriate level of service to the town. Thank you. But I understand the question. Sure. Um, the other. Uh, I'll do it. Um, the next one is the other salary increase. Sean was going to take was part time. Clerical. Five zero three one zero is part time clerical. That's um, uh, my secretary, Amy Bogish. Um, Amy does a lot of work. She takes a lot of burden off of me during the day and she handles um she's filling out the FEMA paperwork she does a lot of reporting she does a lot of data, data entry into the system um, we're looking to increase her hours from 22 to 29 hours a week I had a conversation with Tony about this um, I definitely definitely need the help to uh, do the data <coughs> entry and to keep up with the OSHA mandates the NPA mandates all the actual reporting that's done to the state and everything else. So this is definitely something we need to uh, increase. And we're also looking for an increase in her pay um, to comparable people within town um, on her level and what she does now. So that's how we came up with that number. You know, I would just add that it's in, in, in recognition that, that what this, uh, that this is a key member of uh, of our staff um, that um, is is more you know it, it you know it comes under a cler under a clerical category but what she does is much more than clerical um, and that she has a, a large role in managing the information technologies of the department um, and uh, and and data analysis um, as well as the uh, the state and uh, the state reporting requirements that the chief uh, alluded to. Um, and I think it's 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 uh, necessary that she be uh, compensated in a manner uh, commensurate with her uh, with with her with her duties uh, and with um, similarly situated uh, uh, town employees. <coughs> um, next one is part time all other part time all other is our engineers that uh, do make uh, routine maintenance on the trucks, take them for fuel. Um, fix light bulbs, um, uh, manage uh, where the trucks are going, um, uh, <coughs> the truck comes back from being fixed and make sure everything was done, what we're being built for, built for was done, completed, and it's all documented in the lot. So there is a cost increase because the fleet is getting older and there are more things that need to be uh, done in that line. Um, we really haven't gone over the uh, budgeted item of 7000 over the last couple of years, but we anticipate next year uh, going over that, and even this year we may uh, go over that by a little bit, but that would that be also due to the storm because we had some repairs from the storm and everything else. So the best budgeted number we can come up with is uh, $2,000 more. You know, and, 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 and we should say that, that a large part of that is doing minor repairs in house rather than, than I mean we send a lot of stuff out but you know uh, but you know we can change a light bulb in house and, and actually more than that. Um, the 
the other uh, one that we had to increase was data processing. This is our IT people that uh, manage all the uh, data, uh, the data, the server, and everything at the firehouse. There is a cost increase of uh, $2,000 that's based upon increases come July 1 and their fees also. It also includes a, what we've learned over the last year and a half is um, we have something called escalation insurance where if we have an issue within the computer system, what we do is we call, if they can't fix it on the online support or online um, where they can log in and do it or um, over the phone, it's escalation insurance. Basically, it's roughly two hundred dollars a month, two hundred and twenty-five dollars a month. And what they do is they, they actually um, escalate it to. They have different levels, different tiers. So they'll escalate it to the next tier, and we'll get charged for it. What we've learned over the last year and a half is before we didn't we have escalation insurance. Now, before we had it, um, it, would, it was costing us roughly one hundred fifty dollars an hour to do it, and uh, we have the log on how much escalation they've actually done over the last year, and it's actually quite, it's actually the $225 a month that they're charging us actually is more beneficial to us to have it than not to have it because we could be talking a five or $600 bill every month. It's so. a service contract for the, for the IT guys. Right. Does escalation mean they're sending you up to a higher level a of higher IT personnel? Correct. Personnel so or, sir, or 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 service? It's per, it's 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 a higher level. It's, it's they service send you up to the personnel. guy who actually knows what's going on. Well, it's and if he can't go figure it like out, level, then they send like you we, the right now, we have, we're on like a level two. We're on level two tier. All right. Okay. So your your monthly rate is based upon your tier. So we're mostly on a level two. If we have to increase and go to a level three or a level four, instead of getting charged one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars an hour. It's already built in, and we pay for two hundred twenty-five dollars a month. It's basically insurance. And as some of the as the servers get older, we require more and more help on it, and it needed escalation. And I can get you that breakdown on how much time we needed the escalation, and how much we saved over the last year by having that. Thank you. So that's that's the reason for that. So we thought it was a good idea. Um, let's see. Repair maintenance machinery, we increased that uh, by $4,000. We had a heavy year this year, and um, vehicle repairs could be due to the storm. The vehicles are getting more use. The fleet's getting older, so more and more repairs have to be done. We had a heavy year of repairs with brakes on the uh, on one of the engines, um, uh, and just all, all around we had um, Brake drums that rotted away. We had some body rot. We had we had a transmission issue, which we which we looked into and we were able to fix without replacing the transmission. Well, so there's uh, there's quite a bit of uh, repairs that uh, go on. We had some major. Here. We had some, some some very major repairs to some of our apparatus this year, and so you'll see that that our our expense. <coughs> This is our this is our current year expense. It's almost eighty thousand dollars above the budgeted amount of fifty six thousand dollars. So we're requesting sixty thousand dollars going forward. It's an increase over our previous budget, but a lot less than we spent than, than we spent last year. Get that right? Is that right? Yeah. They, yeah. They, they, um, so uh, we think it's a fair number. Repair maintenance and vehicle. What that is? That's all the. Um, DOT inspections that need to happen on all the trucks every year, um, the NAPA, the um, uh, yearly pump testing, the hose testing of all the hose, the ladder testing, uh, the fit testing, and the SCBA uh, bottle testing. So all those we have to do every year for OSHA and NAPA. We don't really have a choice. But those, those, uh, there have been increases with the hose testing, the ladder testing, and the fit testing. So they're going to go up come July. So that's why they, there was an increase. And those are th those are firefighter safety issues, and, and ultimately, ultimately public safety issues. I mean, the breathing, the, the breathing apparatus needs to work. The hoses can't fail. <coughs> um, 
repair maintenance building. Uh, we were requesting <coughs> uh, 30,000 last year. Uh, we were not back down to 19. Over the last couple of years, we have been hitting roughly $30,000, a $19,000 number. We really aren't um, uh, coming close to. And what that, what that covers is the oil water separator pumping in the, uh, for the bays, um, the elevator, um, maintenance, sprinkler test, HVAC, uh, contract, the fire alarm, um, includes the contract with carrier for the boilers, the air handlers, the hot water heater, um, uh, and every other thing that comes along with the building. So that $19,000 number is really close to what our service contracts and everything come in at for all of these things. So if something breaks within the building, we really don't have a room to play to, to fix it. That's why that number's been going over the last few years, and this has been an ongoing discussion in the uh, fire commission over that. So the reason why we, went, <coughs> we requested 30 last year, we're asking for 33.5 this year is because we're gonna hit our $30,000 number this year. Uh, the reason for the $3,500 number is we have a quote um, what some firehouses do is they have these hoses that stick out of the ceiling that plug into the exhaust of the trucks. So when you start them up, start them up you don't have the CO and um, the diesel emissions that are pumping into the building. What we have are these air vacs that are up in the ceiling because what we've learned is the uh, people that have these hoses stuck uh, that come down the ceiling and stick in the truck, sometimes they eject, sometimes they don't. If they don't eject and the driver takes off, you rip the system out of the ceiling, then we have to get somebody back in to replace it. So when the building was constructed, we recommended going with these air vacs. Um, going along with that, we have to replace the filters in the air vacs and the cost of the filters, the charcoal filter and the filter, the actual internal filter, the, we have 10 of these units, it comes to $3,500. This is gonna be an ongoing thing. We're gonna have to replace these every three years. The filters are only good for three years, so. We're actually over by a year, so we're going to need to replace these in July. So that's the reason for that uh, additional 3500 um, Software maintenance, software maintenance went up a little bit because we added cra a crash recovery system. It goes on the iPads that we have in the trucks, and the officers have. Um, what it does is when we pull up to an accident scene, um, a lot of stuff is now online. It pulls up on the iPad. You type in the make and model of your car. It shows us um, where the, because all the newer cars, they even have, smart cars have all the batteries. Um, they, they, show, they show you basically the parts to stay away from. So if you cut a, a post and you hit a canister for an airbag, the post will actually explode. So what the software does is it, it shows you. So the incident commander, whoever, maybe you can pull it up and and monitor where all the cuts are being made and where the tools are used so we don't want to hurt somebody or kill somebody. So it's really a critical piece of critical tool that we use uh, on the scene. Um, yeah, you know, that's a recognition of the fact that a, that a very large percentage of our calls are motor vehicle accidents at this point. And including some very Unfortunately, very serious ones on a uh, more than regular basis. If we go down to 54630 professional development training, we increase that line by $12,000. Reason being is um, uh, we sent a few guys down to the fire expo last year. Uh, we're gonna, we want to do the same again this year. We also want to go to firehouse training, where it's the software training for the computer. We want to send two people to that. Um, and we also have an EMT refresher training due come July. We have, uh, I think it was 16 of our EMTs that are up that we need to recertify in July. Um, along with, uh, we're actually, we have five uh, juniors that came out of the junior program that joined the fire department. They're actually in Firefighter One, which started this month. So. By June, we're going to have five new firefighter ones that are 18 years old, which is a really good thing. And we have more people, more juniors coming through. 
So we see a cost, uh, an increase in the training and uh, like the commissioner said before, we have a lot more um, enthusiastic people. We have a lot more people going for training. We have a lot of different things going on. So this is actually a really good thing, especially in a voluntary department to, to keep people's interest and keep them going for training and to stay up on what's coming out, uh, what new things are coming out. Um, Let me jump in for, the training, you know, when we talk about training, we're just uh, two different things. We, we our, our firefighters train um, at the firehouse and in town on a, on a, on a weekly, weekly or almost almost weekly, sometimes more than weekly basis. Um, but this budget reflects primarily uh, classes that we have to pay for, either to, either to send people to classes or to get people here to, to, uh, uh, to do the training. Any questions on that? Um, programs from publicity. The reason why it went up $2,100 is when we started last year, and it was in memory of Eva Block, <coughs> we, had fire, so we had a fire safety day at the firehouse. We had uh, the Bullock's fire safety trailer come in, and um, it was actually good for adults and for the kids. It showed them how to use a fire extinguisher. Um, on a kitchen fire, showed them if the fire was out of control to leave. It actually, it was a really good interactive tool for the town, um, for all the residents in town to come and try out and go over different things. We also bring the other trailer in, the smoke trailer, where it teaches the kids to stay low to the ground and how to escape <coughs> and have your family have a plan and to meet. Um, in a place in the yard and everything else. So we actually had a really good turnout last year. I think we had Very close to uh, five to six hundred people show up and go through it. Mm -hmm. We let them use. We let them try on the fire gear to show them how heavy it is. We had a couple of people try on some air packs so they get the realization on how much all this equipment weighs when we're coming in. And it teaches the kids not to be scared of firefighters. Actually, they're your friend and they interact with them and. They get they get a red little plastic fire hat and uh, some other stuff, so uh, it worked out really well. And we bring AMR in as an ambulance. The police department brings a squad car in, so it's a really good day. And uh, the Bullock's training thing was phenomenal. It was a big hit last year, so we'd like to continue doing that every uh, every year in March. And uh, it's in memory of uh, Eva Block, who uh, perished in a fire last year. So, um, going down technical, um, technical, we're going to, uh, we're increasing that by $5,000 <coughs> due to the cost increases of foam, speedy dry, all everyday um, supplies that are used on the fire ground, <coughs> foam. Um, <coughs> we're going to have gear replacement went up $2,000 because there's going to be a, um, a cost increase to the gear. So we're anticipating it's going to be roughly a $2,000 increase for the fire gear, which we need to continue to replace because fire gear is good, has a shelf life of 10 years, and it needs to be replaced. If the gear is damaged during a fire or a motor vehicle accident, if it rips, we send it out to be repaired. If, gear it's, means. if this is your actual turnout gear, your fire gear that you wear into a building, if uh, the gear is exposed mm -hmm. to extreme heat and it turns red and it and it's, gets faded, the gear is no good. It's done its purpose, and it needs to it needs to be replaced. There is no there is no patching it or fixing it at that point. It just needs to uh, it needs to be replaced. So uh, we do that. Also, what's changed over the last few years with gear is we send our when we send our guys to firefighter one or firefighter two training. The schools actually look at the the condition of the gear, whether it fits the individual properly. The date of the gear, how old the gear is. If the gear doesn't meet this criteria, they won't allow them to take the training. So this is why we need to keep up with our gear replacement program. So what we try to do is the more seasoned veteran people, we try to replace their gear, put their gear. If we can have their gear fit one of the new incoming people to do that, we'd like to do that rather than purchasing brand new gear for somebody that just joined the department and we want to make sure they're in for longevity for uh, that they're going to stay in before we start spending uh, roughly three thousand uh, dollars a set of gear per guy. So, <coughs> moving on. Uh, 
hydrates. Hydrates, we uh, we had an increase, we knew about this uh, after our operating budget came out last year. We had to transfer some money into it, so we figured on what that is um, this year, which is uh, roughly $67,000, which we don't really have a choice on that. That's the fire usage charge. Uh, since the town owes its hydrants, we don't pay for the water. We just pay for the ability to have water in the hydrant at our disposal if we need it. So it's kind of a loopy thing, but we kind of really don't have <laughs> a choice in that. <laughs> we, and we get that bill in what, in July, I think? We get, we get two bills. We get one in January and one in uh, July. But it's, oh. it's, we're, it's, it's a little bit of a guessing game in terms of what that bill is going to be. So um, we're, we're often running, as we did last year, a little bit behind in terms of in terms of where they where they increase it. But just you know, I, I probably recall that the the charge for hydrants throughout the hydrants that we do have in town that's coming out of the fire department budget, not out of some other. Town budget. Okay. Uh, capital capital outlay. Um, minute or replacement, which is thirty three sixty. Minute or replacement, just so everybody knows. Minute is the things the guys have on the sides of the belt. It's like a little radio. When a call comes in, and the tone goes off, and it uh, states where the call is and what it is. That's how we notify the volunteers. Um, inventory control system. What we want to do is we want to go to a barcode system uh, with all the equipment that the fire department has, log it into the computer, and then during truck crew, which is done twice a month, as the guys go through, we want to be able to take the scanner and scan each piece of equipment to verify it's there um, and everything else, and that would actually go into the computer so we'd have an inventory sheet and we'd be able to have a log on um, all the equipment that the department owns between when it comes down to sledgehammers, all the way up to chainsaws, um, the hurt of the ampus tool, compressors, and everything else. So that's something we would like to uh, move forward with. Um, this is are, are you finding that you're losing equipment or the trucks no, are going out no. not fully we've talked, we've talked about this for years and we really never had a, a, a decent way of doing it. Right now what we do is we have a truck sheet and it's, um, it's like this. And uh, what you do is you go through and you check the items off on the sheet mm -hmm. and then basically it goes into a folder and if we don't have time to enter it into a computer or whatever else it just sits in. Essentially it, a manual a manual system now and this is an automated and it integrates it with our uh, our existing uh, firehouse software package where where we have do other um, to our, our reporting and, and the, and the fire marshal report reporting as well. <coughs> so it's another module on the software package plus the the hardware for the scanners and just in, in improve <coughs> our our um, our controls. It just it's it's basically like an inventory <coughs> checklist which we sure. do twice a month and this way at least if we're missing something, say we're missing a sledgehammer and it could have been left at a fire, if we had a fire it could have been left there and we, we we don't know. So what we could do is we can go back and say, okay, well um, two weeks ago we had this on the truck, so where were we in the last two weeks? And if we are missing it, we can go back and see if we can locate it, if it is missing. And it also gives us a way to automate all the stuff within the computer, keep track of all the equipment. So when it, if, say, a chainsaw dies, we can retire it and put a new saw in its place and then have documentation that way. Right now, we don't really have a way of doing that. And that would actually work really well also for fire gear as it gets retired. We can take it out of the system and keep track of it that way. Some of the stuff uh, is really expensive, so we just like another way to really <coughs> track the, the computer. Seems like it's the easiest way to do it. Is there any maintenance cost for this ongoing, or is there is? It, I believe it's I believe it's four hundred dollars a year is the is the um, renewal for the firehouse software. Thank you. Um, the next thing is a pack hammer. What this is, it's actually a. Um, actually a pretty cool thing we used to have one years ago and it broke and we never replaced it and um, we actually had a demo at the firehouse uh, a couple months ago this is like an air chisel and they have different bits for it so you can break you can go through a piece of concrete it's like a it's almost like a mini jackhammer but it's it, it's an air chisel and it could actually go through if you cut out or if you cut uh, help out with extrication it cuts through 
metal on vehicles. It does a lot of different things. Runs off of air. We have all the other tools to have it run. It's just another piece that we can add to our air <coughs> set that we would be able to use. And it's a uh, Pack Hammer 90 actually. It works really well. We've uh, demoed it and tried it. And going on with that is when we had um, we had the rescue struts there the same night. It's made by the same manufacturer. What these do is we use these on, a, on an often basis. If we have a vehicle that's on its side, we, we, like, we stabilize the entire vehicle, we use these struts. We actually have a small set of these struts now. We'd like to increase it and have uh, more of these struts. Um, stabilized vehicles with it. We've stabilized houses with it before. Where if um, somebody's come uh, backed out of a garage or went through the garage and they took out a center post and there was a sag in the beam. We were able to put these jacks underneath it and they're ready to, to carry so many pounds at so far out. They're, they're designed to do this. So we actually, uh, we, use, we use these struts really often. We use them on almost every motor vehicle accident and we use them on some fire calls and different things like that. So we use them quite a bit. It's an expensive, you know, it's an expensive item, but it, it's, you know, I think it's absolutely necessary. So, and that's all I have. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, more? Can I just, just that last thing, the struts, because I remember, I remember there was a presentation here one time showing how, I guess when they were, when they were new, how you all had, had been using them so effectively, so quickly. Yep. So I just want to be clear, this is to supplement what you already have or? or this is to add, this is actually to add to it. The system that, that was um, out a few years ago, uh, it, was, um, it was good for its time and we still use them. We still use them all the time. Um, we're actually looking to use those along with these. These are a little easier, user friendly to use than the other ones are. Um, there is nothing wrong with the other ones. They're heavier, um, they basically do the same. These have a little more, these are more, they're not as cumbersome, they're easier to use, they're more user friendly, they they can hold more weight. Um, it's just uh, easier to store on the truck and um, going on with that, when we put them on the truck, it doesn't take up as much room so we can hold other equipment on the truck and it's not like the other ones are gonna go to waste, we're definitely gonna continue to use those. Yeah. So, the one thing I remember the essence when, you know, on, uh, motor vehicle accident scene that to have something that that is that that's lighter and, and quicker and easier to use is, is can be a critical difference you have another question no i just remember the one picture where it, it was holding up it was holding up a garage right yeah these two these struts um it depending on the depending on the size strut and how far it's out they'll hold up to eighty thousand pounds so which is on hydraulic jack yeah, basically what it is, it's a, it's, it's a, and I should have brought one. They're actually, you actually unscrew to where you need it, and there's a, there's a knob that you just keep screwing down, and it's a, it's a double thread actually. The thread goes one way, or the thread goes the other way, just like a screw. Yeah. It's just got a double thread, and you, they have different tips that go on it for cars. They have different tips that hold up houses, hold up buildings. So it's actually pretty, uh, it's a pretty nifty thing to see actually. Yeah, specifically designed for this purpose. Right. We use we use the struts all the time. Um, I mean, I don't want to take up all your time here, but we had an accident over on Ford Road, um, probably back in September. Our car was uh, leaning over into the river right as you come around the bend down there. There's a stream there, and the um, car was leaning over the edge, and we probably, we probably had a 350-pound guy in there that we had to take out, and he was trapped about six inches off the water. Um, so we actually used a strut. We actually had to put one of the struts all the way down. And the water over there is actually pretty deep. It was about four and a half feet deep over there. And uh, we were able to stabilize the car that way, cut the car apart and actually take it back <coughs> up um, through that. So the struts actually worked out really well in that, in that uh, situation. So The equipment gets used quite a bit. I can't uh, stress it enough. And what's good about what's good about um, equipment and keeping up to date with equipment and purchasing new equipment and moving forward is 
It also sparks in, in a voluntary department when I speak. <coughs> spark it sparks interest it sparks enthusiasm they want to be there they want to contribute especially when you get something new they want to they want to be able to use it to its full uh, ability of its max so it's actually a really good thing so it, it helps to have the right tool for the job and not to, and, I mean it's it can be a hard enough job a, a, as it is but uh, but uh, you know when you have the right equipment then you can then, then then the, the firefighters, you know, then, then they're confident that they can do their job, do their job properly, and they do. So, I mean, going on with the struts, for example, these struts are more user-friendly, so instead of two guys setting up a strut, it, you, you're down to one guy. So during the day when we're struggling to get people, leaving work, or where they're coming from, depending on where they are, it's actually, you have less manpower during the day, it's easier to deploy some of these items and make it, uh, make the uh, situation a little faster. Anything else? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, next is uh, Town 1135, which is Government Access TV. Sure. Yeah. What else? What else is there? Yeah. 
September. Tell us what this is all about. Not that we don't know, but um, the, uh, the plan uh, and zoning commission is requesting hundred thousand dollars over two year period for the consulting services for the plan of conservation and development report. The report is a required document by the state of Connecticut. Title B, Chapter 126, Section 8-23 of the State of General Connecticut's General Statutes, which requires a Planning and Zoning Commission prepare, adopt, and amend a plan of conservation and development for the municipality. By not completing the report, we run the risk of losing state funding. The report is required to be updated every 10 years. The last, the report that we have right now was completed in April of 05. The purpose of the report is to provide a guiding, the, pretty much the guiding principles for the town. The purpose of the report is to show the commission's recommendations for the most desirable use of land, residential space for recreation, commercial, open space, I have commercial twice, and town owned property. It creates a blueprint for further purchases the town may want to make and what it is used for. The report basically becomes the platform to amend the existing and future zoning regulations for the town. And this is the basis that we use to build on. Most uh, towns our size hire a consultant for the services. Larger towns have planning departments and often do the plans in-house. Some towns our size actually do have part-time planners and then it actually can be done in-house. We don't actually have that. So we're, we're, we're one of the towns that hire, has to hire a consultant. Um, we've done uh, some telephone research to get an idea of the cost of the consultant fees, uh, which basically are coming in at the range of between $100,000 and $150,000. So we're, we have two years to complete the report. And uh, so we're saying we're, we're putting it up there that it's $50,000 two years in a row. And that's the assumption that we get the $100,000 <clears> consultant. <throat> the last, uh, I mean, uh, Terry just passed out a um, document, but the 10 years ago, the, um, the town uh, paid, well, they, they uh, line itemed 50,000, I think they paid uh, either 43 or $47,000. So that was 10 years ago. So unfortunately, we can't get all our investments to double every 10 years, but I'm just telling you that's what the fees are. Do you have any idea who's going to do this when they eventually have the money in place? Uh, we've spoken to a couple of different uh, places, but we haven't actually felt that we could go out there and start soliciting. We've just talked to people on what we think their fee, what the fees are going to be. Um, do you have a recommendation or maybe a request? Don't get the people who did it last time. Yes, exactly. I'm sure Terry and yeah. Chris will confirm yeah. <clears> that. <throat> yes, exactly. Because they really didn't do anything last time. Right. So how much have you actually used this plan over the last 10 years? Do actually, you, know? you do use it. You actually do. I mean, I'm not going to tell you that you use it all the time, but I will tell you it's one of the things, mm -hmm. like, for instance, uh, if there is a piece of property that comes up for sale in town, mm -hmm. if it's like talked about in this plan, then it's like, okay, the plan is that we had hoped that that property came up for sale. So it's, it's like things were anticipated as opposed to you could run into situations if you didn't have a plan and somebody comes along and says they want to put a Walmart over where we have something else mm -hmm. expect. Uh, if we don't talk about the fact that we have areas for that Walmart to go or whatever, then there's more of an argument. We can say, no, we've thought about this. This is where we want to put our development and that's not the place. And this is this is pretty much what you can use. But I would also add in that quite often when Tony's doing state grants, like the sidewalks that we went down, that he needs a letter indicating that it's part of the town plan. Well, usually with every state grant we apply for, we have to put a covenant on this. Hmm? It's, 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 it's in our plan. It's, that it's, in, yeah. it's a pretty important document. Okay. So not to beat a dead horse, but we, did, we did spend some money uh, on something and didn't use it or it got yeah. tossed or what was the deal with that? Uh, my understanding here? is that you uh, spent money and the commission did not like the report so it was evidently tossed in the trash and they wrote it themselves. But that was the last plan that was that required was the last under the statute. It's just the one we have now. Right. 
the, the consultant didn't finish his task and was uh, discharged before he finished the task. Uh, the commission took over the task, but the, the consultant got uh, did a lot of the original survey, did the charrettes. Many of you participated in those charrettes at that time. Um, the, um, uh, the, he prepared a lot of the maps that we're still using in this report. Uh, the commission was uh, not impressed uh, at that time as to the, uh, uh, how much it, the, the consultant's plan related to Woodbridge. Um, frankly, they, some of these people do can uh, uh, things, and, uh, and and we've actually found, I think, some instances of, of uh, other communities listed in the draft document that we're reviewing. So, uh, <laughs> so, the point is that they make good okay. use of it. So, if the commission's willing to get that involved, maybe we get a group of students who could actually learn something from. You know, doing a plan like this, doing the background work. But that's like having students in the Constitution. You, this is really a yeah. land use well, Constitution. Uh, actually, you need it. No, it so measures everything. But they decided yeah. the yeah. last so time. So actually, uh, uh, I'll start off by saying, no, okay. we're not doing that. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, we're not if, doing that. If we actually had a, yeah. uh, a planner that was paid for by the town, that actually would right. be a good place to have a couple of interns work with a planner, and, okay. and you could actually do that. And we don't, we don't have that. Yeah. So otherwise, it's a good idea. But this is a hugely important document, it seems to me. And a lot has happened in the last 10 years. And to be honest with you, this one, this one, I mean, it actually even needs to be more in depth than right. this one is. Okay. It, I mean, they did a great job, I get it, but it, it needed to be, a, it even should be more in depth because things are getting way more complicated right now. Right. So, yeah, Jeff, I was going to ask about that. Uh, and the state law that requires each municipality to do this, what do what level of specificity is required? Does $100,000 make us compliant? Do we get a D, or does that give us a, 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 a plus in terms of details? I, uh, well, it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, we have to have a report for the t for the state. I'm right. not going to tell you that they actually have a grading system. They, they hear me out. They just want to have a report. The the quality of the report helps us. It forces us to look at what we're doing and makes us think outside the box and figure out what we want to do in our town so that when things come up, we, we have some, we have a blueprint to go to. The state, on the other hand, if you want to have a town that doesn't have a blueprint, you just want to talk about, uh, we're going to put, you know, you got ball fields, then, you know, they don't actually care. But when he goes and puts a grant and says, so we, our town plan says that we want to put in sidewalks and it doesn't say that, they'll probably go to the guy who has the town plan that says they want sidewalks. They've planned for sidewalks. There's another component to it, too, that the state statutes require that when the zoning regulations get to get changed, that you have to be able to demonstrate that the town plan envisioned that those would be looked at. And so part of this is also necessary for when they update their regulations. So it's also envisioning where does the town want to go in terms of that and looking ahead with that. So it's, it's a multi-tiered layer of things. And it's it's very difficult to try to figure out where you're going in, in 10 years. And, 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 and again, going along with what Chris saying, I mean, that's what makes it the blueprint. I mean, that, and you, you basically spend your time putting this document together, and then you add zoning to try to enforce what you've just put into this plan. Because chances are you're going to put things in this plan now that are different than 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. The big thing that we did the last time that this was updated was the vision was to adopt the village district. Um, in downtown, and that was done, and so that has an architectural standard to it, and so the architectural review board was created, and so you've seen some changes that have occurred down there. Um, one of them was when Webster Bank was in that little building that's now next to where Wheelers is. That was refurnished on the outside. I mean, you're taking a shoebox and you're trying to make it look as different and as neat as you can. But that was through the Architectural Review Board, which was because the town plan envisioned having a village district, which the commission then adopted. So there's lots of layers to this thing that works. And just as a side, the other thing that's in here you'll all be interested in is that the last plan suggested that maybe we would buy the property on Racebrook Road and put in a public golf course. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, things change in town. Is it still viable? <laughs> <laughs> we already have it. Can we write, can we know. write history? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay. Uh, is it your intention to uh, get going in 13 on this? 
Well, actually, we're behind. And uh, we have uh, kind of, uh, we've been trying to have uh, monthly meetings about this. And, uh, but, we, but we're a uh, commission of people who are employed at other places. So we have kind of limits. Like yeah, kind of. <laughs> and we have uh, limits on how much time can get spent on these things. So we'll go to a meeting, we have a great meeting, we talk about a lot of things, and then we leave. And then the next meeting we say, oh, we should set up another meeting. So that's why we really need this person to facilitate. We're actually behind. We, and the last plan <clears throat> already had um, public um, hearings, you know, to get people's input. Uh, and so along with that, actually, we ha we are actually having a public hearing on uh, February 11th, which is the invitation that all we're trying to get all the commissions to come to it. It's the uh, Leslie Crean is the uh, planner in uh, the town of Hampton. She does a lot of. Uh, she works a lot of these things. She's a, she's a planner, I mean, and she's going to give us a presentation on possibilities, things that other towns do, what we can be looking at and considering, and things like that. But hopefully, I think I'm hoping that everybody will come into the you know the conservation crew pop and be part of the discussion because that's what it's the idea is to get some input. So recreation has actually already done part of their 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 part. And they did a great job. Um, and As you know, Conservation Commission is working on their update. Part of this that they do is, um, or they can do, is a natural diversity inventory for the town, and so they've been working on that. Um, and then they also, you have a listing of potential uh, parcels that you might want to purchase for open space or use for different uses, and so they're going through that. And again, that was something that when the town purchased the properties that um, the water company was divesting itself of just south of the Merritt Parkway. This again was something where we could reference it was in there and, and there's a couple other pieces that we use. So that's another integral part of it. So they <coughs> have other boards and commissions that feed into it, but the primary focus of creating the whole thing falls on the town plan design or their planning aspect. Any questions on this? For this one further kind of I know you've done some preliminary <coughs> inquiry stuff um, and I agree it's a very important document it's got to be done the town's at a disadvantage if we don't have a good one um, but I was just encouraged you know cast the wide net with the, the downturn in the real estate market over the last several years <coughs> I think that at least there might be a reasonable chance to get this done for less than the, the hundred thousand um, I agree with you I'm just telling you what we're being told, yeah. and I and I question it every time. But I'm just giving you the range, and obviously, if we can do it for less, then we'll try to do it for less. But that's also why we're trying to spread it out. You know, it does get spread out over two years, so mm -hmm. you know we'll know. I guess the other question is, um, uh, <coughs> hopefully, you guys are going to say yes. I don't know what the option is otherwise. But uh, when does this go? Which budget does this go into? When does this start? July, July 1st. So technically, you're not. We don't have access to any of that fifty thousand dollars until July first. Correct. Correct. So if we want to come back and talk to you about any contingency monies you want to help us, so we can get started early, we can like borrow and then mm -hmm. come back yes. in July first. What are you offering for collateral? <laughs> 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 my wife. <laughs> I've given you my wife. Fire department. And I'm hungry. <laughs> 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 Actually, we do that. We advance contingency yeah, and then reduce right. reduce your request or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I guess the other button. question, maybe uh, probably shouldn't push it, but um, but you're going to anyway. Well, it's it's a consultant, so do we have to put out a? Uh, I mean, it's a consultant. Do we have to put a? You do. Uh, yeah. RFQ, yeah. RFQ, yeah. especially RFQ. these numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for checking. The, um, <laughs> this I know you spoke highly at a, another meeting we were at about this. This woman from Hamden, is she somebody who might be interested or she can't do it in her capacity? Uh, I, I, we're on television now. Okay. I got you. And that would be awesome. Okay. I'll just leave it at that. All right, good. Okay, next is um, Thank you. Thank Tab 1185, which is Zoning Board of Appeals, which is okay. exact, <laughs> it's an exact duplication of the prior budget. Are there any questions or comments anyone else have? Good job. We would plan no increases. Okay. Thank you. No more question, no more question on that one. All right, then we're at 1270, which is building official or building department. And 
and that is a very small increase also. The, uh, the, uh, actually, the non-salary items in the building department um, uh, has, are reduced. Um, the, um, the salary items that we uh, get directly from um, our finance office um, represents the only increases in this budget. Uh, the non-salary uh, items are reduced. Um, because uh, it is, we do plan this year to obtain a new vehicle, and we are reducing the repair and maintenance, thinking that the new vehicle will will allow us to have some savings, and we're suggesting that we reduce it accordingly. Okay. Otherwise, we are at zero based uh, budget budgeting, uh, except for the salary. Uh, any questions? We do like to take this moment to talk about just a little bit about revenue. Sure. Uh, we're, this is a revenue department. Um, and I don't know if you have a revenue sheet. Maybe you can pass this out. Um, we, we prepared a, uh, we're making pick preparing a revenue estimate. Uh, uh, the first reason of our delay was that we, uh, we're conducting a survey of other towns' building permit rates, uh, which we do from time to time, just to see how we're doing in our code of proof. Uh, and, um, and then uh, half of our office got the flu, uh, so we're lost a week there. Um, but um, we are, by the way, this is also a time of year when we talk about uh, Madison uh, building department <laughs> cases. Yeah. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, Madison, the town of Madison was sued by a bunch of builders over their building permit fees. Um, the uh, the court certified a class of group, and we were very concerned because our, you know, we would be uh, in that same group of thieves if Madison was had this trouble. Um, and uh, uh, we think, I think, to the best of my ability. I believe that the uh, that the matter has been now dismissed against Madison, uh, and I think it's over. Uh, and uh, the the uh, uh, the defendant, uh, the town of Madison, uh, doesn't uh, isn't at any further risk. Um, having said that, we then looked at um, uh, our other groups, and uh, we did a comparative analysis of our fees, and I believe that we are not the highest and we are not the lowest in terms of rates of, of, of service. Um, if you look at the sheet that we just handed out, um, uh, we believe that while we projected revenue of $75,000, uh, we, uh, we believe that we can easily uh, achieve seventy-five. dollars We believe that we're going to be a little higher than that. Uh, we are with great cautiousness suggesting that we budget for $70,000 of the revenue next year. We just don't know. We have an abundance of empty lots. Uh, we have approved subdivisions without one house on it. Um, but we are concerned that people will be not racing to build uh, in, in the next 18 months. So <coughs> I think that we, I, I, I'd be delighted to report to you the surplus. And of course, in the past year or so, we, we had a lot of discussions about the Woodbridge Village project and how it was ready to go. And, and we saw a television program where I guess Toll Brothers stepped in, and et cetera. I would imagine that we're nowhere with that. We have, we have not heard any further information. So this project, which was going to replace the Toll Brothers project, uh, or far exceeded, as we, as we heard from all the experts who spoke on the matter, um, doesn't look like it's anywhere near fruition. Uh, for us, I would wish I would oh, they would start. I way. couldn't I couldn't agree more. Uh, uh, I think that the the um, uh, the neighborhood uh, would appreciate it. Uh, the fiscal year would appreciate it. Uh, uh, we'd be delighted. Uh, 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 it, it's a uh, it's a project that has nothing but potential uh, and we're um, uh, patiently waiting stand ready. They've, they've asked the Town Planning and Zoning Commission some, to make some changes, uh, and there's been a, 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 a discussion between them about it. 
some of their changes, I think, is represents some more <coughs> risky behavior um, on behalf of the town. Um, some of it doesn't. Um, you know, they, for example, they asked if they could phase the project, which they, when they got the project approved, they, they didn't want to phase it, and, and so now they've asked to phase it. I, nobody cares if they phase it or not. We can certainly uh, accomplish that. You know, they want to subdivide the property underneath the project. That's another matter that I think one has to analyze the risk about. So, uh, but it's, it's obviously not had its time yet. It's an approved project. It could happen at any time. Um, but uh, we don't see it going forward at this time. But there haven't been any discussions since last June, right? Yeah, no. I, I think they just don't have the funding. Yeah. No. Well, at that at that toll brothers at that, at that toll brothers meeting, the gentleman from the group that owns the land, who seems to be the guy with the with the money, made it sound as though he has has no intentions of uh, of going for. Because there's several partners, right? If I remember. There are several partners. But he's the one, I think, with the with the serious. When the project got approved, we didn't hear from any of the the, the partners that we heard from the lesser partners. Yeah. Uh, but now we mostly talk with the principals, and 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 I think that he's the most pes pessimistic about uh, the marketplace. I think that if the, if the marketplace existed, the funding would appear. Uh, but it's the marketplace. These people who are in 34 or not don't seem to be having a too difficulty selling their units. Those are big. Those are big. And those are big. Totally units. different from. Yeah, big units. So, uh, detached units, by the way, as opposed to. Yeah. Okay. These are smaller. They're three stories. They're one car garage underneath, and that's, that's not I'm a, not an expert, but that's not over 55. 55 and over, right? I, the last thing in the world when I turn 55 on is, is to be climbing up three yeah, stories and, three and only stories. have a one car garage. So um, I, I said it from the start. I, I don't see how that could be classified as a, a 55 and over product. It's not desirable to any 55 year olds I know. So um, okay, so I just just because we heard about this project being. Ready to go. I just, I, I'm I just to have clarify. a quick question. Yeah. Can you, Terry, do you know how much of this building permit revenue is attributable to whole house generators? Sure. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of them. Because I would suspect that that's a lot of the. the um, that's fueling our economy, if you will. So it's <laughs> yeah. I, I'm irresistible. Well, you know, it, it's, just it, it's, certainly, it's certainly taking up a lot of my time. <laughs> um, the um, uh, we are uh, we don't we don't break them out from electrical permits or gas permits uh -huh. into uh -huh. generator permits. Um, the I can tell you that that many weeks I do two and three a day all week long. Uh, I believe that they are costing between uh, six and ten thousand um, dollars, depending on the uh, different accoutrements uh, that come along with them. Uh, and uh, many, 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 many people of our friends and neighbors have installed them. Uh, and uh, at first it was marketplace driven, they couldn't find enough for them to sell. Uh, now I think um, uh, there is enough, uh, but, there's a, but they're still working through a backlog. And it really wasn't until, I don't think this week, I've done any this week, uh, but there's some next week. Uh, and this has been going on since the since the since end rain. of the first storm, first storm. as opposed yeah. to the second storm, as opposed to the third storm. So um, it's it's uh, it's a it's a vigorous thing. I think one day we will not know that the electricity is out in Woodbridge, <laughs> but it'll be very loud outside. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll all be over fifty-five. We won't hear it. So don't worry about it. But everybody will be taking a shower. And <laughs> and it, it was cute water. when the storms happened, one of the storms this year, because there was a lady who came to your morning meeting when you had the power that was out, and she was complaining bitterly that everybody else had the power on, and then it turned out when they checked their list that, uh, no, they, they just had generators and she didn't. Uh, everybody around her had put in a generator, and, and uh, she thought that she was being singled out uh, by <laughs> having to the power interesting. Okay, any other questions for 1270? Well, then the last one is in Wetland 1630, and again, it's a no increase budget, so I don't know. It, we, we, we propose, um, Just a uh, aside from a, uh, a, a salary item that uh, changes, uh, 
shared employee with the town plan zoning commission in the local wetlands. It's a zero based budget. The important fund that we have in this line item, the line item that, that does this, uh, uh, besides our, our, our land use analyst, is our technical consulting uh, line item. We, we, we rely upon uh, 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 the engineer uh, for a great number of things, uh, and uh, he, uh, he's been useful in, in, in drainage issues around town, and, and, and that's our important uh, target as a department to maintain access to uh, uh, Bob Criscolo, our consulting engineer. Okay, any questions on that? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next is tax collection, which is tab uh, 1155. Two and a half percent is pretty much a, a, a norm salary yeah. wise. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, car allowance is up one hundred fifty dollars. I said, well, it's fifteen percent. I don't think anybody's worried about that. Yeah, how, about, how are things going on the collection end? Let's talk about that. That's, <laughs> more, that's the more <laughs> interesting part of your uh, interesting part. operation. We don't care how you spend it. How do you collect it? <laughs> uh, I think we're doing pretty well. Yeah. We've, uh, had a good year. Um, I don't know if you've read about them. We had a couple of foreclosures, which is not a happy thing to have to do. Um, but we've had a, a lot of back taxes paid, uh, not only through foreclosures, but just through kind of pushing up things. Um, but I think overall, we're really doing pretty well for our town in comparison to what other towns have been through. Um, it's not easy for a lot of people. They've had to change a lot of things. They live just to be able to pay taxes. And we have a large um, elderly community here. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the issues that we have. Um, What's the percentage now? The percentage of the you know, I'm not sure, years. but I, it, I would guess somewhere on 15%. Maybe you mean over 55? Yeah. That's more than that. More than that. About 30. Yeah, it's about close 30. to 30. Okay. <laughs> I, it's Look around your table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah. Just for, for your information, really quickly, um, next week I'm meeting with um, L. Wagner Associates. That's the company that we hired to help us with the Small Cities Grant. I have uh, 17 applications ready to go. Um, so we're going to start on those, see, you know, looking at priorities. And uh, hopefully by maybe, I hope by March, we'll be actually at homes and working on, on projects for people. Okay, any questions for Pat? Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a great round. Yep. Thank you. Is uh, Betsy around? Or? Um, she is. I'll get her. Thanks, Pat. Assessor is tab um, eleven sixty. Um, doesn't appear to be too much in the way of uh, out of ordinary increases. Anything you want to highlight for us, Betsy? Um, I think the 
No, the only change was last year we leased a new copier printer in our office. Um, and we didn't change anything in the budget and kind of to see where we would end up with how my <coughs> budget would handle it. And that's where you see a little bit of an increase from my office just to sustain that uh, lease payment. My normal office supplies were 1900 It was, I think it's about $120 a month. And since my office supplies had always come in a little bit under, we, we averaged it out. So that's why you don't see a huge increase there. And, um, you know, it's a color copy or printer that the whole upstairs uses. So, um, you know, we decided to just put it in the operating side of it. That's really the only change there. Yeah. Everything else is status quo. Any questions for Betsy? And then we have um, assessment appeals, but that's just a continuation. There's no increase at all, or very little increase, actually. Yeah, the only change I made was postage, because postage, the postage went up. And yeah. everything that we have to send is certified, and that was the biggest increase. So you know, if you just happen to get a surge of something, there's a certified uh, charge for that. You know, unlike the other stuff, that only went up a penny. Certified goes up a little bit more, so that's why that just changed a little bit. Betsy, why don't you talk a little bit about the grant list? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're in the middle of doing grant list right now. Um, pretty much, we have we're about flat on motor vehicle. Real estate is up about three or four million dollars, which is just basically additions. And, um, and right now I'm doing personal property and I spoke to Tony earlier that we're probably gonna be down a couple million dollars only because our biggest client of our grand list is CLMP with the, the overhead lines going through town. No, and when you start out with $40 million and every year you get a depreciation to that, you take a couple million hit every year. So that's tough and it's hard to pick up. Um, we did have a bunch of new businesses come in at 245 Amity Road, but obviously not enough to make up for that. Mm -hmm. So we may be seeing, um, you know, a pretty flat grand list this year mm -hmm. in terms of increase, almost, you know. I mean, I'll be done before you guys are you know, done with your process. So you'll definitely have numbers way before a week from today. Yeah, we'll have them by uh, the, the 31st. Yeah. Oh, great. So uh, I'll meeting. be done before you guys are mm -hmm. done with your side of it. But um, I'm not optimistic in terms mm -hmm. of seeing anything that's, that's right. coming down the pipe that's going to be anything yeah. great. Uh, the other thing that I did want to talk to you about is that we are gearing up for revaluation. So you as elected officials will all be asked, obviously, if we come into a very flat year with, uh, you know, mill rate and everything, that our reval is 2014. So you all know that. That's a year you can put in your brain and, and be able to say to them, <coughs> the best thing to say is, if you have questions, refer them to my office. But we will be going through reval in 2014. We because the way we have done it in the last two revaluations, that's why you're not seeing a request for any capital for revaluation for this year because everything is basically done in house, which is saving the town hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is a good thing. And it also is a better thing because we have a much better control on stuff. There will be a slight cost of things, which obviously probably will be asked for in the next budget year, but not in this budget year. I think last budget we spent under $25,000 for the revaluation, which is, is an excellent thing. Um, so, but that's when all the valuations will change. So if anybody does inquire to you, which probably if the grand list comes up flat, there will be a mill rate change and people will be inquiring about that, you all will know refer them to us, we'll be able to help them know that next year is the year that things will change a little bit. But, so. and Betsy, what is that revaluation cycle again? Every five years, and next year is 2014, we revaled in 2009. 
Is it fiscal 2014 or calendar year? It's calendar year. It, well, it's actually Grandless year 2014, right. which would be fiscal 15, year 1516. So. Any other questions for Betsy? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. The rest of these, I guess, are going to be handled in the house here. Yeah. Is Senator Karen, you moved? I moved it, yeah. Okay. So then we're going to start with the former fire station, which is 1191. With all of the building um, accounts, we still have yet to figure out the exact cost of the, of the natural gas. Okay. So you'll, you'll probably see them all over the map. Some mm -hmm. departments requested the same, some tried to account for a decrease. So we're working with the, the gas company to get some some pretty realistic figures based on our oil use to come up with some more realistic figures. Well, I'll you, based on our experience with the, our church, it's going to be a lot less than oil. Yeah, so you'll see the center was one, this is another, but there's several. Okay. Okay. And what's going, just, why don't you just give us, what's going on with the former fire station? Where are we, uh, where are we at with it? It's currently in a f final design phase. Okay. And, um, we do have insurance proceeds um, still um, in reserve for this project. Okay. So it just depends on. But the fitness is moving there for yeah, sure. So there'll be some extra costs associated with some of that. Okay. And is the fire department still using part of it? They will, be, yeah, they are now. They will be yeah, yeah. They'll be storing their uh, the antique vehicle. Right. Bay one. Bay one, yeah. All righty. Next is the nasty board of selectmen and capital, 1110. <laughs> There's not much in capital in terms of yeah. the current year. <clears throat> and operating, um, not much. Um, there's generally um, just some of the supply accounts and the uh, legal fees okay. associated with uh, legal ads. Okay. Capital, nothing to speak of. On that? No? Okay. Remind me again, what is this a dollar for the volunteer fire department? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Zero percent increase. Yeah. <laughs> it's put in there every year as a uh, uh, recognition of the oh, okay. you know, between affiliation between the town and the volunteer fire association. Okay. All righty. Probate court, 1120. Uh, it's a status quo. Our, our, yeah, our contribution is the same. Well, I mean, there's people are people pretty happy. Well, they have to go where? Did Sony for that act? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Oh, is it Hoyle? Is that his Cliff name? Hoyle is the judge. Yeah, he was the uh, acting judge here in Woodbridge when uh, we had a vacancy. And, uh, and then in the realignment, the redistricting, uh, Woodbridge became part of and Sony at Derby and Seymour. So people, it's working out okay for people? As far as I know, yeah. I haven't any complaints, yeah, obviously, right? Derby Probate Court. Derby Probate Court. Derby Probate Court located in Sony Handling Woodbridge. LLC. That sounds like, that sounds like. My father was a judge of probate there for about 25 years. Was it, was that Now, where does Bethany go now? Prospect? Hamden. To Naugatuck. Hamden? I think Hamden. Hamden, rather. Hamden, yeah. And Orange? Milford. Maybe we should move to Okay, next is uh, general administration, 1140. Again, the biggest thing there is insurance. Insurance, right. right. Is that a pretty good number as far as you can tell? Or? Uh, it is, it's, it's um, maybe a little conservative. It could come down a little. Okay. But um, that's probably pretty close. So in this one, for example, just so we can. Natural, you'll see natural gas. Yeah, I see adopted out. budget last year was 10,000 for oil. Right. And you're putting in 7,500 for natural gas. Right. Okay. So. But we like I, you know these will probably get adjusted for the. Uh, Once you have a better handle on it. Right. Okay. Any questions on general administration? Then we have 1145, which is information systems. Small increase. And you want to say that? Uh, sure. There is a um, increase in the actual software maintenance is pretty flat this year, which is. Um, we, we try to um, really to look at that carefully and um, because there's a lot of times some of the computer 
uh, vendors, I think they could just automatically put in increases. Right. And, uh, you know, it's the way the business, it's the business model. Right. It's right. right. Yeah. So, you know, we try to work with them to not have to realize those increases. Right. So, um, so we work pretty hard at, at trying to keep that uh, under control. Well, thank and, th you. and this handles all in, in this building and firehouse. And, 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 includes, or firehouse uh, and this includes the, um, uh, the town hall, mm -hmm. which is the main part in the recreation and the building official. Uh, the main part, the biggest part of it is the um, financial package, which oh, is Munis. Munis, right. And the assessor's um, package and the tax collector. So all the financial packages make up probably, right. yeah, the, right, in the building department. The financial packages make up 30, 30 probably 45,000 right. of it. But, but the fire department has its own, has its own separate thing. Right. right. But the police department is going to, is going to be folded into this. The police department is, um, still be carried has in the, that budget? They carry it in their budget, but are using the same um, vendor. consultant vendor that we use. Okay. So there's some economies there that we've been able to realize. The fire department uses a different they have consultant a different vendor. slash vendor? Correct. And is there a consultant and a vendor or no, only vendor? it's just there's a consultant that's a, actually based in Woodbridge that we use on an hourly basis as we're then needed. And a lot of times it's it's, um, it's strictly an online. They don't actually come out here only, right. only Woodbridge. But the vendors are separate. Vendors are separate. Those are third-party packages that we have. Right. But the, so the consultant helps you make to choices. To coordinate, right. To exactly, coordinate. or give you recommendations like, no, you don't need that upgrade for Right, that exactly, $2, right, exactly, yeah. right. Or, or uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're telling you this, but, you know, really, you right. know, you could get it with this, right. that sort of thing. Thank you. Okay, anything on that? The information system? And then finally, uh, 1150, which is the finance department. Yeah, the um, one area here, and um, it's probably... I was probably being a little overly optimistic here. It's the banking. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, two years, it was $13,000 in a row. And that's not as a result of an increase in bank fees, but as a result of a decline in our earnings rate, mm -hmm. which is pretty much nothing. And um, at one point, we had zero. At least that's stable. We used to, as a matter of fact, we used to have zero on this line. We used to not have to budget anything. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, that's huge. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. And, and we don't yeah. keep it in the bank for too long. I mean, as soon as it goes in, it comes out. So and these fees are being assessed for yeah. fluctuating balances as opposed it's to for transactions. 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 Yeah. So each transaction, there's a fee, right. which is pretty pretty stable for several years. But um, as you, if you have money in the bank, it earns interest and it right. offsets fees. It offsets right. it. Right. Yeah, those days are not now. And just a float on you know a day, right? Based on our transaction level, would cover all this. Right. But oh, yeah. now it doesn't. Different times. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, the, the, I just I'll just point this out that pretty much across the board, salary increases are two and a half percent. So right. keep that in mind as we review other increases. It's actually mm -hmm. two. Let me two clarify percent. this. Two. The two. reason why it's two and a half is because this increase was during time, the year. Time period. Right. So budgetarily, it might look like two and a half, but really the increase is two. And right. that's already fixed. Yes. Right. That's by contract almost for everybody. Right. Right. Okay. That is pretty much it. Um, we're meeting again Tuesday and um, six o'clock, same week.